Hello everybody, my name is Vinny Athos, and welcome to our last, sadly, Warframe in a nutshell for a while. We have completed all the war for different Warframes that we've done work with. The only ones we will do a little bit more in depth to, maybe down the road, will be Excalibur, Bolt, and Mag. Now, today we're looking at Zephyr, last of our Warframes. So, Zephyr Prime has 75 armor, 225 energy, 450 health, and 400 shield with a 1.20 sprint speed. The fastest sprint speed in the game. So, the question that many people have, you know, about Zephyr, because Zephyr is kind of a weird frame, she's been remade at least twice, I want to say now? There is some really bizarre stuff that she has. Now, regular Zephyr... I'll let you, I'll warn you, is a little bit different than this one, but it's still the same. It's 450 energy, uh, health and shield at rank 30, but she only has 15 armor in her normal form, and 150 energy in her normal form. As well as a 1.15 sprint speed, so there's a small increase in sprint speed, energy, and armor by, well, 50 armor, or, no, 60, 60 armor, in the case of Zephyr Prime. So, how do you play Zephyr? Well, we're about to see all of her different abilities in sequence. Um, and we will not be doing it against level 135, so that's ridiculous. You're going to probably face enemies that are level, that are level 30 or so. So we'll go ahead and we'll do this. Oh god, they're exorcists. Let's kill these. Wait, I need my Tysis for this. Even the Tysis has probably level 30 Exodus units. Jeez. There we go, they're dead now. Cool. Alright, so let's 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 redo that. We don't want them. We want Lancers. Again, Lancers are a better indication of the junk clearing capabilities of your frame. Now, there's a couple things you might notice about Zephyr right away. The first is that she kind of hovers, isn't she? But that's because of her passive. Her passive is move, move with increased agility while airborne and fall more slowly. This gives you more mobility when you're actually in the air compared to other Warframes. The reverse ability is Pale Wind. From the ground, you can charge and release to launch Zephyr into airborne hover. From the air, you can tap and dash forward or aim down to dive on it enemies below. So the dive bomb is an explosion radius and damage of 500 and a radius of 7. Jump is about 12 and a half meters into the air and the air range you move forward or any direction is 2 meters. And the speed you move is 300 millimeters per second. So I'll showcase this. So you can do a charge up, which will get you higher, and actually get this, you know, kind of this hover effect for you. And then you can... Look at that. Unmodified actually deals a pretty good bit of damage, but you can tap this instead, and you get launched forward. Now this launch does do a small amount of damage, just as people understand, just as, you know, an understanding for this. You can technically kill people. With just this ability, alone, by itself, it is, mo it is movement and it is also death. Strong that way. One of the problems with Zephyr's, ooh god, no, ah! One of the problems with Zephyr's first ability is, while it does have some level of controllability, you need to have some open area to do that, and on top of having to have open open area, you also have to consider that the damage is fairly low, and the scaling on it is fairly weak. So, something to keep in mind. But as you can see, the dive bomb is fairly effective, and again, you can use this to, to, you know, to fly across fairly big expanses areas. And, you know, it doesn't consume all that much energy, so that's pretty good. Now, when you're up in the air, and I might run out of energy for this, as you can see there, when you dive bomb, you can't, you can't do it if you just jump into the air. There you go. So, ooh, take out all three. So basically, Zephyr's first ability is fairly versatile. It can be used very, very effectively. But the biggest thing you have to worry about is your mobility can sometimes work against you, throwing you off a cliff or an edge, especially if you run out of energy midway. 
Now, Zephyr's second ability is called Air Burst. The Air Burst generates a massive burst of uh, generate a burst of massively dense air that explodes on contact and sends enemies flying. You can launch air bursts into tornadoes and make them grow, which will get into a bit. But its damage is five de 500 and its radius is 8 meters. This is, you know, 8 meters is like this, away from people. But, as you can tell, well, actually, 14 meters, let's see if it. Well, actually, you can go farther than 8 meters. I think the 8 meters is the explosion radius. Yeah, I think 8 meters is the explosion radius. And as you can see, it deals fairly consistent, strong damage to the degree, but at the same time, the biggest thing you have to consider... Ooh, that guy's just pinned to a wall. With Air Burst, is it, 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 it's, a, it's a skill shot that travels fairly slowly. It's great for if you have viewers in it in corridors. Oh my god, it works fantastic. But once again, just like with Dive Bomb and the damage from her first ability, it scales fairly unwell with, gam with power mod of strength. So... Now we get to her third ability, Turbulence. A lot of people run Turbulence. Basically, Turbulence makes Zephyr immune to projectiles. I wouldn't, well, maybe not immune is the wrong, I, wrong you know, thing. I believe some projectiles can actually make it through this, but I'm not exactly sure which ones. But it, I will show it to you in a small combat situation here shortly. But now her last ability... It is Tornado. She creates deadly tornadoes that seek out and engulf enemies. Tornadoes deal the elemental damage type they absorb the most. Shoot enemies engulf the tornadoes and do additional damage. So these can become basically a bit like uh, Valbon's Vortex. They get pulled in, but they also get moved up and down, which makes them a little bit more reliable for doing headshots or, you know, shots of any kind. Um, the other thing is they, un well, unlike the Vortex, do absorb a damage type. So, for example, I will show it here. Uh, my Tysis uses Magnetic and Corrosive. So if I send these guys in there, I can shoot these tornadoes, and it will, oh, well, it doesn't really matter. I can shoot the tornadoes, and they will absorb Magnetic and Corrosive damage, but they'll only do one. So at this point, they're doing, a, I believe they're doing Magnetic damage. Which is unfortunately, my magnetic damage is slightly higher than my corrosive. Let me take a look here. On my Tysis. Is the magnetic higher? My magnetic is higher by 100 or so. So, it's the highest amount, highest damage type that they absorb. They don't do dual elements, they don't do anything like that. They're just simply the highest damage they absorb. And as you saw, pure damage killed those six Lancers. No problem whatsoever. So, we have to consider a couple things. Do we bump up? So let's go to level 50. I believe 50 might be Zephyr's limitations in her current kit, to some degree at least. So we'll go ahead and start off with um, the Dive Bomb. Now the Dive Bomb does a sufficiently less damage because these are armored targets. So next we'll do an Air Blast. Again, sufficiently less amount of, you know, sufficiently less amount of damage they are dealt. They are dealt. Turbulence we won't worry about, we will do tornadoes. I just kind of deposited them. One of the interesting things is those tornadoes do do slash and puncture damage. Now if you notice, my air blasts, the tornadoes just got a heck of a lot bigger. That's because it actually empowers the tornadoes to be more effective. There we go. All right. So let's, see, let's move to the 60 and see what happens with tornadoes. The Zephyr is fairly strong at max rank. Her lower ranks are not so great, but at max rank, she could be a, quite a powerhouse if she's played correct. <sighs> say that you could spit them out over there, tornadoes. I wanted you to kill them. Well, I guess in many ways it is killing them. Okay, so Zephyr probably sits around level 100 enemies when she is even unmodified. So let's go ahead and show you unpaused enemy AI at level 60. And 
and I'll use turbulence to kind of show you. I'm not taking any damage whatsoever. Literally, this, this turbulence makes Zephyr one of the most easily defensive characters. I mean, they're not missing, per se. And as you noticed, melee will still hurt me. The bullets themselves, oh my god, he goes flying on forever. But as you can see, Zephyr takes no damage from projectiles while her uh, turbulence is up. I don't know if that has certain limitations. Um, we will go ahead and look right now at Zephyr's abilities and see if there's anything that I might have missed. So, let's see here. So basically, the dive bomb actually deals slash damage, which is kind of interesting. Um, if you cast your tailwind while Zephyr is airborne, it halves the energy cost, which is affected by ability efficiency. So it can actually bring you down to mm, probably nothing. You're doing things right. Um, let's see here. So you have a hover jump that, that that you get, which is, you know, there's explosion radius and everything else is affected by range, and there's duration, those other things. It can be used to pass through laser barriers unharmed in most cases. Zephyr is vulnerable to crowd control via staggers and knockdowns while using Tailwind, however. Um, let's see here. Then then air burst. Does air burst have any tips and tricks for it? Air burst is an effective way to deal with large swarms of enemies, especially melee if they're held together. Air bursts allow allies to apply crowd controls to enemies in the distance. Um, Center as well as Tempest Tailwind. Not players make turn make tornadoes, which aren't affected by ability range ability range mods larger. Sucks and rays of turret. Okay, okay, okay. Um, turbulence is. Apparently very effective to shield mission objectives if you have long enough range. I do believe Turbulence has an augment. Yeah, lower in ability range will make it more likely to be hit by area damage from diverted projectiles while moving. And then her tips and tricks for her tornadoes are due to high proc rate, tornadoes can be used to apply status effects to masses of enemies. Viral can be used to reduce enemies' health though, by 50% regardless of level. Each of the four spawn tornadoes can have different elements. Tornadoes will fling enemies trapped within them in random directions after a period of suspending them in midair if nothing impending up if nothing in, if nothing impending upward thrust. Say say like a ceiling, for example. So basically it's much more powerful in lower roof tiles as like the grenier, you know, stuff like that, than it is really in open maps. She thrives in open maps because of her large areas that she can play with, but in, you know, closed in certain areas, her tornadoes work better. So we're going to look at her augments here. I believe I have no, I have no augments for her. That's depressing. So look at her build. We're going to look at her mods. So what would you play with her? She has a, da she has a depolarity, or, um, what do they call it? Uh, Nerimon? Vazarin. Vazarin polarity. So for me, I can throw on physique. I can throw on toxin resistance. I can throw on best impedance, impedance, impedance. I remember Juvenation is another one I can throw on there, which is what I'd probably throw on. Uh, the Matter Eye. Again, this is this is not polarized at all. So this is a, this is a Zephyr Prime in her in her in her prime. I mean, I would probably run something along the lines of intensify continuity for the basic stuff. Um, Probably run myself for a little bit of vitality, for some extra health. I mean, that extra health is going to be super useful. Going into the Naramon tree, you're probably going to look at, uh, you're probably going to want flow. You're probably going to want to have auger message, auger stretch, auger reach, streamline. This will probably be your overall setup if you you have these particular mods. By the time you get Zephyr Prime, you should have them. T hands down. Now, I have an extra slot open, which is the Exilus. Some people will open this. And if you do open it, I suggest you get yourself something from the, what they call the Lua preset missions. So, the Drifts. And if you can, I would personally myself get Cunning Drift. Alright. So, we would, normally we would go ahead and showcase Zephyr's power now that she's modified. 
But instead, since we already know this is a pretty high power frame, we're going to go ahead and go back to the orbiter, and we're going to go ahead and look up um, what her augments are. I know that she has a couple augments. I know they're actually. I know one of them that combines her tornadoes into a single tornado, or makes them stationary. I'm not sure which one actually is. So I believe Arbors of Hexus, and again, I'm usually wrong with this, has her stuff. What can we do to help your journey? Which I am very much so wrong, so we'll go ahead and look at Cephalon Suda. Maybe she has it. I hope these interest you. Mm, they will if you have what I want there, so Suda. Also no, so still Meridian? Anything you need, Tenno. I'll be very sad if I have none of them and many of the ones I own. Ugh, oh, don't. That's frustrating. So I'm guessing the one would be in, like, New Loka? Um, there's Mag. There's Nyx. Oberon, Octavia, Octavia, Titanium, Titanium, Trinity, Valkyr, Valkyr, Trinity, Gin. I love Trinity. Ah, Zephyr. Okay, so fix target fixation, which is a augment for her tailwind. Each enemy hit increases tailwind's damage by fifty percent. Damage resets while on landing. So you can actually use this to dive, 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 dive. Stronger, stronger. Pretty interesting mechanic. The jet stream augment. She her movement speed is increased by forty percent and projectile speed by a hundred percent for Zephyr and her allies. So those affect allies with this one. And then she also has funnel clouds, which creates eight additional tornadoes. All tornadoes are 50% of the original size and won't pick up enemies. So it just allows them to kind of like spin them on the, hit them on the ground and deal damage, which is great if you don't want them going flying around on places. So, everybody, that is Zephyr in a nutshell. Again, you acquire Zephyr, her basic form, I want to say, through the clan dojo. So let's go ahead and take a make, 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 double check that there, because I don't want to give you guys any false impressions. Yep, the Tenno Lab, you can get all of her parts and her blueprints, so look forward to doing that there. If you like this video, please hit the like button. If you want to see more of these, subscribe. Of course, there won't be another one coming out until, well, the next Warframe down, which is later this next year. Or if we decide we're going to dig a little bit deeper into each Warframe, that's all up to people who subscribe. And if you have a comment, leave it in the comment section. I'll get back to it as soon as possible. So until then, everybody, I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving, and thank you so much for watching. Bye, everybody.